Hi there, welcome to this review of Conqueror Final Conquest. This is a three to six player game which plays in one to two hours for ages 14 and up. At the time of recording, there is a free expansion which has just come out that is available for download via Katyon Arts website. There is a link in the description. You can form alliances or go to war or betray your friends, bribe your enemies, feed your armies and recruit heroes to build an everlasting empire. So in Conqueror Final Conquest, you're going to take control of one of six nations, all trying to grab power in the ancient world. The game is set in the third century BCs. It includes the nations Rome, Greece, Egypt, Persia, Gaul and Carthage. Each nation has a set of hero cards, which can be used to power up your gameplay. It has a set of bonus missions, which are going to help you to earn currency much, much quicker. And each nation also has eight infantry tokens and 12 cavalry tokens. To win the game, you need to dominate five forts for a whole game round. You will do that by introducing cavalry and infantry into your lands and then pushing them through to new areas in order to capture new forts and additional resources. So to start a new game, you'll decide which side of the match you're going to be playing on. So on one side, you have five to six players for a grand campaign. And on the other side, we have the three to four players. You choose a nation and place its starting pieces as indicated in the rule book. There's also a number of white pieces. These are for an independent army, which isn't controlled by a single player. These pieces are placed on the board as per the independent army table on page 9. As you play through the game, the size of your force will be dependent on the food supply matrix. The number of food supply spaces you control on the board dictates how many units are available to you. The food supply is increased by capturing areas with this symbol on it. As you capture areas, some of them will have a currency token on there. That means that at the start of each turn, you will earn tokens to the value of that currency for all of the spaces that you control. The number of forts that you control will determine how many infantry and cavalry you can introduce to the game. For these grand forts, you can introduce two infantry or one cavalry unit. And for each standard fort, you can introduce one infantry. You can also earn your currency for each area held with this symbol. You can purchase hero cards using the currency that you've got. Heroes can either earn you more currency, improve your statistics, or give you bonuses in battle. And you can also move your units to gain new territories. Remember that if you move some units which cause your food supply to drop, you will need to remove them to stay in line with this scale. Now your planning phase has a maximum time limit of one minute. If you exceed that, you are open to other players making a bribe. If it's successful, that army and the territory will be transferred to the bribing player. The bribe is successful if the briber declares which army he's bribing and hands over the right amount of money to the bank before the late players gets the chance to take an action or before another player is successful in placing any bribe. The late player can lose a maximum of one of his territories to a bribe in the planning phase. If more than one player attempts a bribe, they just roll off to see who wins. Now where there is water, it is effectively one large space. So if you have a cavalry unit, for example, in the water, and it's come from Rome, effectively on its next turn, it can go to any adjacent space, which is dry land, which is not connected via any of these lines. When two units battle against each other, you need to calculate their strength. So a cavalry unit is two strength, and an infantry unit is one strength. Now just because it's defending a territory, the defense unit gains one extra strength. If the defending unit is in an area with a fort, they get two extra strength. And if they're defending their home territory, they get plus four to strength. So for example, in the case here, we have strength two against strength one, plus it's a defending unit, which is a which is an extra one. So it's two versus two. The roll of the dice, so I'll roll for the attacker first. So strength of two 
we add up the value here, three, four, five, six, that's a strength of six against a strength of two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Now the attacker lost by a margin of one, that means that they must lose one unit. Had they lost by more, and they had more units here, they would lose those as well, up to the difference. After it's lost, if it has any models left, it can't take any further actions this turn. If the attacker had won, he would earn one currency. The defender would lose units to the margin of loss. Any surviving units would retreat to an adjacent space, whether it's a free territory or one it currently owns. The victorious unit can follow up and take that territory. If it had two units when it won, it could choose to leave one behind or both move. And the attacker gains an extra action. So it can be an extra move or attack action, but it can only do one per turn. Finally, whoever loses the battle, we have to make sure if they've lost a the territory that we keep the food supply matrix up to date. In order to defeat an independent unit, you must simply have a superior force. There is no dice rolling. You just simply have to have a larger strength than the independent army whose territory you are trying to control. If you win, these pieces are simply removed and you can follow up. There's also a deck of Chronicle cards. At the start of each round, we will turn each card and play the round dependent on the results. So for example, Plague Spreads. Players cannot recruit any units this round. Age of Heroes. All hero cards purchased this round cost two currency less than their original price. And a weak harvest. Players do not earn any currency from their territories this round. And we'll check one more. Germanic tribes attack. Players need to bid a combined total of eight currency to defeat the invaders. If tribes are victorious, all players lose one unit. The lowest bidder loses two units. Players are victorious, the highest bidder upgrades two infantry units to, into cavalry units. So if you take this card specifically, dependent on what you were trying to do within the game, you could effectively, if you've got plenty of currency, but your opponents are already low on units, you could not bid in order to fail to reach the value of eight so as all of your all of the other players lose one unit. You might lose two, but if you're ahead in the game, it might help to make things more decisive for you. As you gain currency, you keep track on them using these different tokens. So you're going to find it difficult to keep tabs on your food supply matrix as well as building forces which are strong enough to get in and win home territories because with the massive strength boost that they get, they are difficult to break down and somewhat easy to defend. So you're going to be building uneasy alliances with player that, players that might be on the fringe at the moment, but you need to keep an eye on how they're doing because they can quickly come into the game and start dominating fairly quickly. And you can switch from being a somewhat dominant player to being at the bottom of the food chain very quickly. There's no doubt that the game plays better on the five to six player board. It's quite easy to play a game on your own, try and increase your food supply and increase your number of territories. But then again, if you're not in the fight, other players are going to pick up on it quite quickly and they're going to team up to deal with your threat. Each nation has these really cool bonus missions in which they can win plenty of currency to spend on heroes and that kind of thing. So the ones that are the highest currency, for example, on Gaul, you need to conquer Italy, which means you need to get in control of these three territories here. Now, Gaul isn't that far away and it's conceivable that you could do that quickly it's going to be difficult to get that home territory. You're going to build your force, but then these Chronicle cards are going to come in and ruin your next turn, forcing you to wait or potentially have to retreat and rebuild your forces. The three to four player side of the board has got less home territories, but that allows you to get into the fight with each other much more quickly. There's also a two player expansion available free of charge called Conqueror Duels. This is available for download on the publisher's website and there's a link in the description to get to that. This allows you to play as either Carthage or Rome and offers a number of scenarios to play in that smaller player base. The game also comes with four quick guides which are gonna help you to push on with the game relatively quickly. So like I said before, 
The game really excels at the higher player counts. You're going to feel under pressure to get your planning phase out of the way because you know that all those other players are going to be waiting for the timer to run out so they can try and get those bribes in and try and steal some of your forces. In fact, one of the games that we played, one of the players actually lost on that bribe. So by taking too long over their planning phase, they actually lost the game for everyone by letting a player that had four active forts steal their territory with a fort and then last out for a round of the game to eventually win. I think Conqueror Jewels is very much worth a look. It is a slightly more stripped down version of the game, but it does offer the scenarios, which are a really good introduction to an already brilliant game. So if you're looking forward to getting coronavirus behind us and getting a good game that's easy to play and quick to learn, back to the tabletop, I very much recommend Conqueror Final Conquest. It's available via the publisher's website. There's a link in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.